I remember I remember saying that about Black Ops 3, where I've had all my friends on Black Ops 3, and I said, a bad game with friends is better than a good game alone. I literally, yeah. It keeps popping up on my Facebook like, oh, 10 years ago you said this, so thanks for reminding me I'm fucking old. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> towards the end of the year now with the end of the year coming that means there's always going to be a call of duty release and did any of us try the call of duty beta the modern warfare beta watched a lot of it but i never never played it i mean personally myself with call of duty to me the last good call of duty is modern warfare 2 mm-hmm. and i'm talking the original modern warfare 2 not the remaster okay um but that being said i enjoy watching it it's yeah. just not something that I would actively go out and, and play. Um, with it, with it yeah. being your last favourite, doesn't this kind of work to be the next one that you'll enjoy? Kind of. I mean, from, from I didn't want to. I didn't want to go and get it because, a, cause it's, I mean, the download size for Call of Duty has always been ridiculous anyway like, of late. Um, so I really couldn't be asked for that. But I mean, looking at it and from everything I've seen, it is reminiscent of how it used to be, and it like the guns look good, the attachments look good. Um, not overly fond of some of the UI elements, yeah. For, especially for like the the gunsmithing part where you have to, to build the guns up. But I do like the level up system for the guns, so that it's not, oh well, I want I want an MP5. I want to build up the MP5. So here's my MP5, and now I'm going to unlock attachments. Yeah, yeah. it's done via the receiver. Yeah. So it's the receiver on the gun that you need to level up, and that's what I that's what I liked about it. So you start off with one gun, you level the few bits up on that, and you're like, right, I want to take that receiver. And, and then now start leveling the up another gun. gun. Yeah, and I like that. It, it's something new. It's something I've not seen done. Yeah, it's definitely in an fresh. FPS. So you know that it does intrigue me. It does look interesting. So I'm definitely intrigued by it for mm-hmm. sure. Um, can I justify spending the money on it for a game that I'm going to play very seldomly? Maybe. Um, it, it depends how it goes on release. It depends how many other guys are playing it. Yeah. Um, and how it goes from there for me personally. What about you, Fraga? Uh, I remember, I remember saying that about Black Ops Three, where I've had all my friends on Black Ops Three, and I said a bad game with friends is better than a good game alone. I literally yeah. keeps popping up on my Facebook like, oh, ten years ago you said this, so thanks for reminding me I'm fucking old. <laughs> but um, yeah, I played the the the, the 2019 Modern Warfare, and I played a lot of COD, a lot. Uh, on console, I started initially, then moved over to PC, where I hammered from Black Ops Two, I think, onwards until about Ghost. I think that's when I stopped. And I played the betas here and there, and they just didn't feel right. They just yeah, literally, they felt like a degrading piece of shit every single year. It was like, like is it Advanced Warfare or something? They're now making the a second one because the the other game they just made was really bad and didn't sell as well, so they're remaking that. But everybody fucking hated the first one. Yeah, it's wasn't like, Advanced Warfare with like the thrusters and stuff? You could yeah, like as thrust well. across like tracer you in like, Overwatch. You had like different characters with different uh, like signature abilities. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I yeah, and it's like quite futuristic and like wall running and whatnot. But again, I did play Modern Warfare One, played the beta, and I was like, fucking hell, this is a cod. I couldn't believe it. I I enjoyed it, and I played it until until a normal COD game sort of runs out of its lifespan. Yeah. yeah. Then I tried the um, the other two that came out was a Cold War and the Second World War one. Yeah. And they just felt like the same old shit again. So I was like, I'm not spending money on these. So I was super 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 excited for the sec- second one. I mean, I I kept telling you as he's like, you need to play it. The first yeah. one was amazing, and it felt good. But I don't know. It feels like they tried to fix certain things, right? They okay. tried to fix uh, dolphin diving, yeah, yeah, where you couldn't get up as quick anymore. It wasn't. It wasn't so arcadey. It was like you actually have mass as a person. You couldn't constantly jump. You jumped twice and then you couldn't jump anymore. And then you stood still, kind of thing. Yeah, but that still didn't stop people from jumping around corners and spraying you down. Yeah, yeah. and I, I hate people that don't ads and hit you from a decent distance away. I just. I hate it. And I was like, this is not the COD for me. 
I did play the VIP. I enjoyed that, and I felt like you could have impact on that. You could be clever about it. Yep. You can go around, revive your friends, or you could, um, as a solo player, get that um, the hostage and get a point for the team. I, I played two or three games of that, and I really enjoyed it. Or it's not worth the money. Yeah. Especially when there's something better coming out. That's free. Which is? Obviously DMZ. And I, don't, that... I don't know whether to have high hopes or low hopes. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I'm excited, but I'm not at the same time. I've, I've heard a lot of Tarkov people talking about it, and they're saying, like, oh, it's going to be like this, it's going to be like this, it's going to be like this. Um, I kind of disagree with most of what I've heard. Yeah. Um, so if, if we think about... Um, first of all, obviously, the main issue is it's free to play. Yep. It's not an issue, but it is if you look at... Um, what was the battle royale called again? Um, Warzone. Like Warzone. Yeah, Warzone was riddled with cheaters. That's the reason I stopped playing it. I enjoyed it, but I stopped playing after twenty games because I just run into cheaters. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Warzone Two is going to be riddled with it, and obviously DMZ is going to be riddled with it, regardless of what anti cheat they bring out. Yeah, in this age, it's always going to be that. Yeah. But then, rather than comparing DMZ with Warzone. I honestly think it's going to be a direct competitor to the cycle, and the cycle yeah. the cycle had a really bad season one for cheating. That was probably the the biggest reason for their loss of concurrent players. I think it was a really good game. It's uh, an extraction shooter that you can pick up and put down. Whereas with Tarkov, it's one of those games you have to kind of get into it and grind all of the levels, the tasks, and stuff like that. Whereas with the cycle. It's it's a bit lighter, which I think works it's for a lot simple. of people. And I think I think DMZ is going to be like that. Yeah, but I personally so, want it to be hyper realistic and be a direct competitor of Tarkov. That would be the perfect world. But I think it's going to be a direct it, competitor of the cycle. Is my stance on it right? I think the the medical system is not going to be anywhere near as detailed as Tarkov. You're not gonna have black limbs. You're not gonna have broken limbs. No, no, no. You're gonna have you're gonna have your med kits or your syringes. Exactly like the cycle. And you're gonna and you're gonna have your um, armor plates probably. Yeah, they'll yeah. probably use the same system as yeah. that. The only thing where I think they've got the edge up on Tarkov is weapon customization with the Weaponsmith 2.0, because you can do whatever the fuck you want, and they're not bound by realism. Yeah, like. I know Tarkov has done a couple. Of, yeah, they, they, yeah, Tarkov's put a couple of things in that don't exist. Yeah, like the um, is it the three three six AP round doesn't exist, but they've put that in. Yeah, they wanted it. Um, Warzone isn't really. I remember playing the beta, and I had a P ninety, but it was an M four. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it was one of the guns. You reloaded it at the top rail with a P ninety, oh, and yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah. I don't M4 know if it's receiver. a real gun. Like, yeah, it, it I don't be. know if it's I'm, a real gun. I'm not. I'm not a huge gun fan. I mean, I like games, yeah. but I don't get into it in the IRL sense. So it could be. But that's that's. But again, even if it is and isn't, who gives a shit? You can do it. Yeah, Call of Duty. You don't play it for the the hyper realism. No. Yeah. And it, I, I just think it could be huge. I'm a bit skeptical on a hundred players on a map because that's going to feel more battle royale rather than an extraction. Because if, if you've got a hundred players. But you need to go into an area, kill some AI, loot some things, and get out. You're against a hundred people. Now, hopefully, the AI are pretty dominant. We don't want the AI just being, you know, just st standard. Okay. Yeah, just push over targets. You want them to actually put up a fire and defend the areas that they're going to be defending, and then also attract with uh, the noise going off with you firing those. You're going to attract the other players to your area. With a hundred of them? I, mm. I, I don't know how that's going to go. I, I mean, how big are we talking map size? I think it's, it's on Warzone 2 map. Right. So I, I don't yeah. know the actual size, but it's the same size as a BR. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a lot of people to fit into a small area, especially if you're thinking about having compounds full of AI as well. Yeah. To be fair, it does say up to. Is that maybe True. just marketing? Yeah, it could be marketing. Well, our service can hold up to 100 people. Not very well, but <laughs> <laughs> not, we not could, in the same we space. Could do it. <laughs> yeah, you all uh, gonna I be mean, scattered on each corner of the map, but yeah. it can be done. All right. 
But I mean, what what what's the pl- replayability like though? Because Tarkov, you've got your tasks, you've got yep. your goal, you've got some sort of goal. You've got your max hideout, you've got your max strength, you've got your tapper, you've got you know you you've got some sort of goal. Yeah. Unlocking Jaeger, getting them to level forty two, and having all them unlocked. <laughs> you've 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 got small steps to a bigger yeah, goal. Yeah, you've got so short goals and goals. long goals. Exactly. So I I think DMZ will struggle with that. I I think they'll have you know how Tarkov has dailies and weeklies. Yeah. That's I think going to be what what DMZ is going to have potentially. Yeah, rather than like traders, it'll be yeah. just actual just missions like side missions. And. Loot wise, it might just be a load of attachments, but you can build whatever the fuck you want with it. You found a barrel and a yeah. P90 and whatever. Like, like you, how you in depth is that going to be? Yeah, they've not exactly. really showed I mean, anything, have they? I've I've been trying no. to watch some videos and there's been like leaks here and leaks there, but there's not been like gameplay or this is what you're looting. Like, are we going to pick up like cans of tuna? We're going to pick up backpacks and you know pom poms from the AI. Is it going to be that kind of thing? Because even the cycle has a lot of loot. You've got yeah, like yeah. different classes of loot, different, you know, you've got like the, the optic glasses, you've got the, the minerals, the ores, like the focus crystals. What is Call of Duty going to be doing that? You've got Smart Crazy Mesh. Work. What I'd be interested to see is if, especially if there's different compounds, different AI, is there going to be factions? You know, is it going to be a case of you can raid certain compounds to get, um, you know, tags, yeah. patches, you know, whatever? Can you hand those in somewhere? Can you turn those into a different NPC or, you know, when you get back to your hideout or whatever, can you then hand that in to up your rep with another faction that might become friendly towards you? Yeah. Um, so I might... mean, what's, what's the stash size going to be? Is it unlimited stash size? Exactly. Backpacks, I can quite easily see that being lootable. Yeah. But stuff like Smart Mesh, not, not necessarily. It depends. It depends on... We don't know. That's the issue right now. But well, I feel like it's going to be want? watered down in some... Yeah, it's going to be watered down in some areas. But it's going to be complex in one or two areas, and if if those are the key areas to make a Tarkov style game, yeah, you know, hit it, then you know, for me, like for it's example, going to have to have quests and stuff because if it if it if I don't have quests or tasks to do, then I I I struggle to play a game. Because yeah, I don't it, without a goal, what's the point? I mean, if if it's an an extraction shooter without quests or, like, targets to hit. Isn't that just a BR? Pretty much. Like, because the loot you're getting is irrelevant. Yeah, precisely. Like, okay, you can argue that, yeah, if you survive, you extract, you get to use that gear the next game. But that's that's a very thin line on BR and extraction, you know? Mm. Whereas I want there to be traders, I want there to be daily tasks, I want there to be tasks from the traders and then guns locked behind traders. I want you to start with a pistol. I want you to start with a pistol. No, that would be nice. And like that. everyone has pistols, so you either have to kill AI to pick up guns, and then you can, like, hoard guns from AI, get out, start again, and, you know, you could be dropping in, and everyone's still got pistols because they're dying, but you've got some stock, I don't know, MP5 or AK or whatever that you can then use and then start snowballing. Whereas if there's no, I- like, if there's no traders or there's no tasks or there's no real goal i don't know what's going to keep me but i'm definitely interested i'm definitely excited for it i just want good ai yeah define good ai no, sorry like... no not not no sorry not good like fun ai i don't want ai to be difficult for the sake of being difficult like killer yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh people farm him let's crank him up so he kills you through a wall well that's fucking fun yeah, yeah. i want it to be i want i want it to be challenging I don't mind if a, if if a sniper kills me from 120 meters away and I didn't see him, as long as he had line of sight. Yeah. As long as he's you know didn't look fucking up there. I was like, oh, someone's over there. Let's shoot him in the face. Yeah. You know? I don't want to jump around the corner with a scalp ready with his fucking magnum buckshot to head eyes me. <laughs> yeah. Two There's minutes more into I the like raid. Seeing like because I know I've noticed it in a couple of games now. Um, one being Stalker Anomaly and one being Vostok. Um, where when you engage the AI, you actively see them repositioning. You actively yeah. see them trying to get a better angle. That's smart AI. That's what I like to see in games. You want it to be a the challenge. AI just, yeah, I don't like it when you you know you engage an AI and they're like, oh, I'm being shot at. I'm just going to crouch where I am. And yeah. Like, it's like, 
it doesn't do anything. I mean, you, you just flank it, then to move to a different position. But if, if that AI is moving in a different way and moving to a different position and you lose sight of them, you don't know where they've gone. Yeah, and then that's like really, PlayStation that's 2 more, AI, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's more of a challenge <laughs> for you and it keeps you engaged and it keeps you having to think, right, okay, I don't know where he's gone. I last saw him go that way, but he could have gone left or right. He could have been anywhere. Really think where I'm go- yeah, I've got to yeah, now yeah. rethink, do I go this way or do I go this way? You know, and that's where the enjoyment's going to come from, um, especially from the AI side of things. Do we get Being it? able to put yourself into the position of an AI as if it's a player? That's way. If if you're having a PvP fight in Tarkov, you can be like, "Oh, he's not here anymore. He could have gone this way, that way, or this way." Mm-hmm. You're putting yourself into that position. Which way would I have gone? Yeah. Outsmart. You're trying to outsmart the person that's trying to outsmart you. You can't do that with AI. Yeah. Oh, he he spotted me here. I'm gonna flank around. Oh, he fucking still killed me because you can see through walls and you just waited for that moment he sees a pixel of me to kill me. See, that's that's what I love about Escape from Tarkov. Like the the PvP in that isn't just you know the whole meme of clicking heads. It's not oh you see a guy you shoot him. You don't know what armor he's got. You could be dang bad on like bullets you're using or the army itself. But if you play smart and play mind games on each other, that's where I find the most fun. Now, are we gonna get that on Call of Duty, or are we gonna get you know what Fragger said? The jumping around a corner, ADS in midair, um, body shot spray, and then you're dead. Are we going to get that? I think we are. Do I want it? Not at all. <laughs> but I think... But then, do you add inertia to stop that? Inertia in COD would be a <laughs> rough one, man. That's, that's still a sore subject. <laughs> that's what I mean. Like A lot of people are complaining about that in Tarkov, and then they're trying to stop it, and then people are complaining about that in Tarkov. Yeah, I mean, I'll put my hand up. I complained. I wanted inertia. They give us inertia, and I don't want it now. (laughs) I want, I want the old one back. It was irrelevant. Yeah, yeah. No, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. So it didn't really do anything apart from it just hindered you getting to max strength. That was all. Yeah. So that releases the 16th of November. We've all speculated. We've all potentially got high hopes for the DMZ side rather than the beta side. But who knows? DMZs in. Is that 16th of November, do you say? Yeah, 16th yeah, of yeah. November, DMZ. And 28th, is it for the Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer? Because that comes out um, early, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. So I think, yeah, the, the, the Modern Warfare multiplayer comes out. I thought it was the start of November, not the late October. But you may be right on that sense. Mm, yeah, I think, it's, it's, I think it's the 28th of October for the multiplayer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 28th of October, and then DMZ comes out in November. Okay, there you go. And and uh, along with Warzone, too. True. I probably won't play that, but I'll definitely, I'll definitely try it. But I've 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 hardly touched this Warzone. But you know, it's yeah. new. I mean, curiosity killed the cat. They, they fixed a lot of good things, I think. So, for example, with the the armor plates, was fucking genius. The Gulag, was fucking genius. Yeah. Those two again, those two key items set them apart from other um, battle royales. Battle royales. Mm-hmm. That have made them made it just more enjoyable. Yeah. But the cheaters ruined it for me. I would have played more of it if there wasn't that many cheaters. Having that said, um, Overwatch Two has got the SMS or the the, the phone the sign up that you can't use. And I'm pretty sure I read somewhere that I think uh, Modern Warfare Two is going to also have that. But then with the latest Overwatch release, um, they've fallen back on that system now rather than everyone being verified by SMS because the issue they had is more than one player in one household or more than one player to one phone. They What they've done now is it's more of a trusted... Yeah, what they've done now is they've done like a trusted player. So if you played Overwatch 1 back in the day, you're trusted and you go through, whereas new players that have never played Overwatch 1 still have to go through the verification software. So that could be something. I mean, mean, if, if they're trying to stop hackers and stop people doing stuff like that i'm i'm all up for that like good on them i i don't know if it's china it might be korea it, it, might, it might be korea actually um i'm pretty sure you sign up with your um national insurance number for example yeah like an id yeah, that's, and that's, if um, you get banned you're, you're you're screwed and i mm-hmm. still believe i would quite happily give people my national insurance number my passport my if it meant not playing against cheaters, 
Yeah. Can you imagine if you get caught cheating, you have to pay more tax that month or something? <laughs> <laughs> that would that would be a deterrence. That's all we need. Everyone, yeah. all the game devs just need to get everyone to sign up with a national insurance number or their um. I mean, that what's what's like... the U.S. version of the national insurance? That one. Uh, social security. Social security. Yeah, everyone signs up with that. If you get caught uh, caught hacking or doing something like a bannable offense or like some in TOS on Twitch or YouTube, then you 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 get a bill. I mean, you get caught okay, speeding, however, you get a bill. However, <laughs> I know we made a joke about it before with uh, Brain. Yeah. What about the wrongful allegations? What about the wrongful ones? Yeah, yeah, true. There's always yeah. false positives. Yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> the Call of Duty comes out 16th of November. We... Oh, it sounds like we're looking forward to the DMZ side of it. And we've got a few games coming out before that, as we've already just said. But I'm sure what we're keeping ourselves busy with right now is World of Warcraft. So World of Warcraft has released the Wrath of the Lich King expansion. Now I'm going to put my hand up and say that was definitely my favorite one. Um, I, I even recommend if someone's coming to play World of Warcraft, just play that one. If you've never played it before, yeah. come and play that one. Absolutely. So yeah. that's what's keeping us busy. And we all, and we've all played it. We all understand we play it. Uh, has it hit the nostalgia for you guys? Here's yes. the thing. No. You're not level 80 yet. <laughs> no, I never played it. You've, oh, you never no. played Rapid Legends. I've, I've never played it, and that's what I mean. It's so much fun, but I never played it back in the day. Because it was either back in Germany when I was 14, we didn't have internet. Mm -hmm. And after that, I moved over here. I didn't have anyone to play it with, and also... I was playing shooters mainly, and I yeah. didn't have the money to pay the subscription. The subscription, essentially. Mm -hmm. However, it's 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 very grindy. I, don't get me wrong; the the extra XP boost was amazing. That's yeah, yeah. made it more fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I really felt that the last couple of levels, when I didn't hit the level yet, by the time uh, the expansion came out, yep. I, I I felt that. Um, but I'm I'm having a blast. I fucking love it. So, it's See, not a hitting the nostalgia for you, Braggers, technically. What about you, Chef? Yeah. Oh, 100% it is. Uh, like, the uh, prime example of this, like, um, you know, I went to a Heroic um, yesterday. Or, no, sorry, the day before. And um, I was like, oh, you know, I haven't been to this dungeon in, like, you know, probably 13, 14 years. <laughs> and I was like, what, what is this one again? You know, I can't really remember. But then when that loading screen popped up, just went, just everything <laughs> came come yeah, just come flooding back and I was like, Oh, I remember what's going on now. And it was just it just that immediate hit of wow, that memory's still in there. Like I still remember, you know, it's amazing what you keep stored in, in the memory bank. So yeah. Years. Um, you know, like I said, I mean I haven't been into these dungeons for some of these dungeons for thirteen, fourteen years. And yet I step foot inside it, I'm like I remember what I've got to do. I remember where I've got to go. I remember how the boss fights work. And it it's mad how it still hits you like that. Yeah. Even though it's been so long. Yeah, but um, Ta Taro get annoyed that I can't remember what we had for dinner tonight. You know, two hours <laughs> ago. The but the rotation on a boss in, I don't know, Halls of Lightning or something? I mean, I'm good. Yeah, all right, I'm sorted. And she'll always bring it up. And I don't know. I don't know why it just stalls it. But saying that, I remember a lot about Wrath of the Lich King. But then when I've leveled up to 80 and I'm like, what do I do now? I'm kind of reliving it. I don't know if it's been that long that I remember it. But I also can't remember it. And I need to, I don't know, need to Google like, what is the best gem enchant for this? Or what is the best gear for this? What is the best in slot? And then as soon as I, as soon as I read it, I'm like, oh yeah, of course it is. So it's been that long. Uh, which is kind of like two levels of exciting. Wrath introduced a lot of features that weren't obviously in vanilla and TBC. Yeah, yeah, true. Um, and there were a lot of features. So it, it broadened the game and expanded it a lot because obviously WoW was in its stride at that point. Yep. It, it was yeah, yeah, it was. It was expanding and growing. They were, I think they were, at the time they were, they were just about hitting 8 million players. Um, with a player base that big, they needed to have a diverse amount of things to do to keep everyone entertained or yep. you know because not everyone's after the same thing like yourself you're more interested in the pvp side of things yep you know you want to get into those battlegrounds you want wintergrass for example example was the first 
type. kind of like crossover. That, yeah, so you know that that was that was the one that introduced PVE content locked behind PVP. Yep. Um, and it was a good way of integrating both sides of things. Um, but then equally, you get people that just want you to do the PVE stuff. You know, there's there's off the top of my head eight different factions, and you know. There's rep rewards for each faction. Yep. You have to grind to certain levels to get the certain rewards, like mounts, enchants, different things. There was so much to do, and it just kept it just kept everyone busy because there was always something that someone wanted to do or some something someone wanted to grind for. Like yep. you know, Sons of Hodir, for example. A lot of enchants are locked behind exalted rep. Yep. You got a lot of dailies to do. You know, you got to get grinding. But once you got there, you, you felt rewarded because you'd actually earned it, because you'd actually done it. It's a grind, but it's not too long at the same time. No. Whereas no, I feel like Vanilla and The Burning Crusade definitely were probably too grindy, especially for the age that I played. Some, some of those dailies, you had to grind for 20 plus days. Now, I would have lost yeah. interest. Whereas the Sons of Hodir, I've just got that exalted. I've got the best in-star enchant now. It didn't take me too long. It took me about five or six no. days. And that's because where the player base expanded so much, they bought, they got a lot more casual players in. Yeah. So they need to adjust the game to allow for the okay. casual players to be able to keep up with the people that couldn't play six, seven, eight, nine, ten hours a day. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, more in a lot of cases. So they had to have it in a way where it was easier for the, the casual people to keep up, which mm -hmm. is great because it kept everyone on board. It means that people were actually able to say, you know, it wasn't just a case of no, I mean, you already played for four hours a day, you can't you can't come play with us and you, you can never... Yeah, get, get shunned casual allowed, kind yeah, of thing. So it actually allowed the people that could spend 14 hours a day playing the bloody game and the people that spent four hours a day playing the game to play together. could actually do the same content and play together be yeah. because it, it was easier that way to, to mingle and mix because it wasn't that difficult to do and it, yeah, it was still engaging for the people that were still playing it for that long. Yeah every day so you know that it was a, it was a good mix and i think it's probably the best expansion example of that actually happening i feel as i played up until mr pandaria towards the end of mr pandaria and i remember it being every expansion was getting easier in a sense mm -hmm. uh, i remember i'm i'm not a big fan on the pve raids but i remember doing some of those raids and i was thinking wow this is easier than the lich king I, I remember the the amount of wipes that we did in Nax Ramus before ICC came came out, and I was just like, "Hang on, this is a lot easier." And then over the years, I've gone back to World of Warcraft and been like, "Oh, let's have a go. Let's give it a go." Everything seems a lot easier. There's like quality of life, and then there's yeah, too easy at the same time. And I feel like they've got a good balance in Wrath of the Lich King, but. What's Dragonflight going to be? Yeah, I mean, I'm oh. already being badgered to go and play Dragonflight. <laughs> by one okay, of my so friends. you're in. That was my next question. Fraga, <laughs> yeah. are you playing it? I don't up? know. That's the thing. I don't know. I you're, mean, you're going. The way you're playing Rapper the Lich King, you're going. Fraga, what about you? I. It, back to, sorry, just one more about the Rapper the Lich King. Of course. Um, me being quite a, a recent retail player. Yeah, I started around um, Legion. Okay, I started at the end of Legion. Um, I was a very, very, very casual player. I didn't even Just fucking your toe in. raid. I yeah, literally, like all the changes they made are probably for me. And when when, yeah. I, when I've gone back into into like this now, even TBC, I was like, I can see why they made them changes, and I think they definitely improved. Like, it's it's really weird. When they came first came out, people complained about it, but now that those people are in a full time job and they're going back to it, it's like, you know what? I can, maybe that did make sense. This works for me. <laughs> yeah, it, it it makes sense now. And yeah. um and uh, actually that's where I want to get into with Dragonflight. A lot of people are so amazed by the new talent tree. But people complained about we were glad when the talent tree left yeah, back yeah. then. <laughs> And, and the what other issue is, gone. yeah, exactly. Like, you've—they're never going to be able to please everyone. They—they they, they got rid of it because it was too hardcore. Yeah, and then they go taking it back. It makes no sense. The the, the issue, why WoW now doesn't feel as good as it did back then? Because I did dazzle a little bit 
It was the unknown. Yeah. Right? You went into World of Warcraft, you didn't have a fucking clue. You didn't have Icy Wains, Veins, you didn't have Wowhead, you didn't have Pierce fucking Pawnee, yeah. you didn't have fucking telling you where the quests are. You, all you had was your coordinates, a website of fucking typing in what the quest name is, telling <laughs> yeah. you the coordinates where to go. Remember that fucking Westfall quest or something near the bridge and you have to find like the corpse of someone? Well, yeah, or you had um, to find like the messenger. Early. I didn't have a fucking running up and down the road. I I had to go download two add-ons to figure out where that fucker was. (laughs) Yeah, you. And nowadays, you can like I think New World, for example, one beta. You went into New World at level one, knowing exactly what build you're gonna have, what's best in slot, where to get it from. And I think that's what kind of kills modern well, kind of killed classic well. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to get to. But equally, I think the talent tree. It's going to be one of those things that people are really, really happy about. Yeah. But I think it, it'll hit home soon enough that, oh, actually, I don't want this. I do. Oh, I do. I like the customization. Mm. And the amount of customization you can do on each talent tree is wild. What, what you've got to get away from is I, there's, a, there's, there's going to be a meta. There always is. But I think the metas are going to be quite close to each other this time. I think there'll be... This is the absolute meta, but this could also work too. Whereas, like... There'll be variants. Yeah, there'll be variants, and you're... Rather than just clicking a talent to, you know, gain a new spell, what you're doing is some of them that I've seen... I haven't uh, done a deep dive in it, but some of them are like... You choose a spell, but then that means you don't get this spell. So, So, for an example... For any WoW players out there, like a Paladin, you could get, I don't know, Crusade, Crusader Strike, but then that, you're giving up, this is completely an example, uh, you're, you're getting Crusader Strike, but you're giving up Hand of Freedom. Now, any Paladin player out there, they're going to want both. And it's things Especially like that. Yeah, uh, and I feel like there's going to be a lot of thought that goes into these trees. But the only real reason I'm playing Dragonflight is dragons. Right. That, that's it. But, yeah. <laughs> and the good thing about the talent trees is it's going to remove the cookie cutter builds. Yeah, yeah. That's, definitely. You know, that, that's the best part is, you know, as it stands at the moment, you go into PvP. Oh, okay, that's a warrior. I know exactly what he has. He's going to exactly do this. He's, he's going to do this. Yeah. yeah. Because Whereas... everyone's the same thing. But with, with this, where there's gonna where you're going to be able to diverse your talent tree a bit more and, and pick different Precisely. areas. Precisely. You, you're not always going to go, oh, I wasn't quite expecting to do that. That's yeah. something different. Um, so I think that's going to make PvP a bit more interesting again with the with the new talents. Whereas sure. that, that's why I'm joining I, it in Wrath of the Lich King at the moment, because I can do, like, so many in one talent tree, and then I can do so many in another talent tree. Where is retail still, like, you pick your spec, and then there's, like, five lines, and then three options in each yeah. line? Yeah. You pick one per line. <laughs> yeah, so exactly what you said. It's going to be, you'll see, a, I don't know, a warrior. You'll see a move, and you'll be like, oh, he picked that move out of those three. Okay, I know that. Whereas the, there is going to be mystery to this new talent tree, and you're going to be you're not going to know what what kind of I don't know what kind of warrior he is until you actually fight him. And I think that In could PvP, work really well. Yes. Yeah, yeah. PvP. But I think I, PvE, that's me. I I think the toxicity will come out more with this kind of talent tree within PvP. Uh, PVE, sorry. Yeah, yeah. You'll have raid leads being like, "Oh, use this." Oh, I haven't got that. I didn't spell that. Well, go fuck off. I respect. <laughs> No raid leaders uh, still happens, like that now though, because you got raid finder. It, it happens. On the gone, gone are the days yeah, of that's, that's, that's not raiding. That's not really raiding. No, really. If if, if it's been done in the right way, you can have the same race, same spec, uh, same spec and class, but you might need variances to do different aspects of the boss fights. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, for example, you might need. So, take um, the new power. I think it's Invoker. I think is the, is the new new class, the, the dragon class. Um, you know. You might need for for certain boss fights, say, you need a, a point that's being spent on the left side of the tree, but yep. you also need a point spent on the right side of the tree. Yeah, yeah so, so they I'm join. Gonna need, yeah, so I'm going to need to have at least one person with this one and one person with that one. Yeah. So it is, I think it, that's probably going to be the best way around. A bit that, of diversity. If, if they've done it that way. Rather than but being, I mean, oh, if, you're a warrior, I need a warrior with this move kind yeah. of thing, for an so example. All warriors have this move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's when it gets. Yeah, but equally, you could then also say that's toxic. Someone signs up with, you know, I only need this one item from this one boss, and I'm gonna, I've, I've, I've cleared this on mythic. And I'm coming with you in heroic. Oh, have you got this spell? Because our, our other warrior hasn't got that. Oh no, I, I went the same way. Oh well, fuck off. 
<laughs> yeah, but then equally, there's there's certain even even in Wrath. I mean, take Max Ramos for example. There's on twenty five man, um, on like certain encounters, you need to have two priests. End up because you need the two priests to mind control. Mm. Like you, there are certain raids that are built around needing a certain composition. That's um, why. That's why I like PvP. You play the class you like, how you want, <laughs> and you just fight other players. Whereas yeah. with with PvE, it's you have to have this build, you have to use this, you have to use this, and a lot of things could go wrong. And I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I. I did play TBC and uh, Wrath of the Lich King a tiny bit and never made it to max level. I didn't mm -hmm. put any... I, I didn't understand the game and whatnot. Yeah. However, um, I remember being scared of, of going into raids or dungeons. I either found idiots like me or I didn't go into a dungeon. And even now, I'm level 71. I haven't gone into a single dungeon. Not at all. I, 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 I still have that fear of wasting someone's time and being moaned at because why did I pick that talent over that talent? And it, it fucking happens. You can't tell me it doesn't happen. I know it happens. And it's, it, it may have if happened WoW back dies, in the day. No, I think nowadays it, nowadays because everyone has access to the best, best in slot items and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Back in the day I could rock up with a int cloth belt <laughs> as a paladin or even a warrior and no one would give a fucking shit. Nowadays they probably have an add-on telling you, hey, that guy's a fucking idiot. <laughs> true, he true. doesn't know what he's talking about. Yeah, true. I mean, I understand where you're coming from with that, for sure. But I mean, I think that's when you need to look at the social aspect. You know, that, that that's why people are in a guild, you know. Do guild runs. There's, there's, there's a lot of people in the guild that we're in right now that refuse to go to dungeons with, with people outside of the guild. Yeah. Um, you know, because they know there's not going to be any bullshit, there's not going to be any ridicule, you're just playing with guys in the guild, everyone gets along, there's no issues. So no one's really going to care, like, oh, you want to play that way? Sure, play that way. You know, it's not really an issue. Um, I think that's probably the best way to start, because after you've done that a few times, you're going to build your confidence up, and you're, you're going to be like, right, well, I know I know how to handle myself in these dungeons now. Maybe I can go and get a random mm -hmm. group and, and, and go and do them. I mean, in... um. In retail, I raided the the, uh, the most recent uh, add-on. I raided, but then the guild fell apart because our non-serious guild wanted to get serious, and the raid league took all the top people with him, and we sat there like fucking idiots. Literally, like we just sat there like, well, what are we gonna do now? Oh, we'll have to rebuild. Nope, I'm canceling my sub. I'm not dealing with this. <laughs> it's honestly the downfall for WoW is gonna be the elitist community there's always going to be that pushing out the casuals yeah there's always going to be that but there will be a space for the casuals i'm a casual on wow especially nowadays i'd like to think i know quite a bit about world of warcraft but i'm always going to be a casual and i feel like especially the wrath of the lich king classic we're playing we're, we're just playing with people that want to remember the good time of world of warcraft or the the fun times the way you remember yeah. so i think everyone's a bit more lenient nowadays Whereas... Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot more people now that don't really give a shit. Yeah. Yeah. Honest. I mean, yeah. Oh, I can't judge. I can't say. Oh, that's definitely happened. Yeah. Uh, all I can say is I've got PTSD from what used to happen, <laughs> and that's why yeah. I don't want to bother with it. It's, it's and honestly that's perfectly valid. I don't have much hair left. Um, <laughs> I'm not losing it on well. <laughs> okay. So that's it for episode one B. Yeah, we'll call it one B. And we spoke about Call of Duty and World of Warcraft and what we've been playing and what our thoughts are with Dragonflight coming out. And then next episode will be containing Super People. The Super People has just launched or just landed. And you hear our speculations, our thoughts and our worries before that it dropped. And if you're interested that much, I could make a video on my thoughts on it after it's landed. You gotta let me know down in the comments. But everyone, thanks for the love. Thanks for the support so far production value, the quality, everything's going to go up from here. It's a starting point, but I hope you enjoyed the conversations so far, and just big love to all of you. Thank you so much. See you in the next video. Make sure, go on, give it a like and a subscribe. I'll see you soon.